Ladies and gentlemen, it, I'm delighted to be here today at this conference of the digital transformation of cities. And I would like to thank our Lithuanian member federation, the Lithuanian Construction Association, for the invitation to your wonderful city, and especially for the hosting the, uh, the trip and the walk to your nice old town last evening. And you are even able to provide perfect summer weather conditions in late April. Thanks a lot. I'm here in my capacity as president of FIEC, the European Construction Industry Federation. For those of you who are not familiar with FIEC, I should say a few words. FIEC was founded in 1905. Today we have 31 national member federations in 27 European countries, representing construction enterprises of all sizes and from all building and civil engineering specialities. And in recognition of the extent of our representativeness, we are the social partner representing employers in the European sectoral societal dialogue of the construction industry. At FIEC, we have been working hard on the digitalization of construction since 2016, when we set up a working group on BIM, today called Construction 4.0. Since then, the pace of change has been incredible. As a contractor myself, responsible for heavy construction at Weidecke, Norway's largest construction company, I have some experience with digital construction. Norway is one of the countries that has been using virtual design and construction for years already. Therefore, we know about the benefits it can bring, as well as some of the challenges that need to be overcome. As president of FIEC, I know that the transformation of the industry is not going at the same pace in all countries. However, in the federations, we know for sure that it's no longer a question of whether European construction needs to transform, but of how quickly that can happen. EU policymakers have already recognized the need for digitalization in all industries and in terms of construction. Although the support has been a bit slow in coming, I'm pleased to say that partly as a result of our own lobbying lately and jointly with other construction associations, the European Commission has recognized the need for targeted support for our industry. I will come back to this. Let me talk first though about why and what support we have asked for. You may be familiar with the European Construction Industry Manifesto for Digitalization. Smarter construction, stronger economy, inclusive society. What do we mean by this? Let's start with smarter construction. I probably don't need to tell the experts in the audience today that digital technology is leading to more efficient construction with less errors, less downtime, and more, traceable, more traceability of materials with better monitoring and predictability regarding maintenance and malfunction. All of which is going to significantly improve sustainability and building performance in the long term. At this point, I could already go home because what I just mentioned is already a great achievement for the industry. But there is more, of course. What we are seeing now is only the beginning. In the coming years, buildings will not only be smart, they will actually be proactive, taking care of us and making our lives easier. Indeed, in the European Commission's Department for Research, officials are talking about proactive buildings. The Commission is investing in future programs to not only research possible applications of artificial intelligence, but also make it mainstream key technology. We already know that artificial intelligence can be used to perform calculations that would take a human being months. For example, it's being used to improve winter road management in Finland. 
Predictions are being made about the likely areas in Helsinki that need gritting based on historical data on freezing weather conditions and the impact on road temperatures. Gritters are then sent to the right parts of the city. This is just an example of how applications of artificial intelligence that has already been used. There are many other exciting possibilities coming from digitalization. Artificial intelligence to reduce energy consumption, collaborative robots in construction processes to improve the working conditions and job satisfaction of workers on site, augmented reality to improve the client's experience of the design process, and so on. Smarter construction is already here, and so on to stronger economy. It is already recognized that the health of the construction industry is a barometer for the health of the wider economy in general. When our industry is in good shape, it generates jobs for related industries, the obvious ones being the production and sale of materials and production sale and rental of plant and machinery. In fact, one direct job in construction creates two other in related, in related industries. But construction relies on demand, and demand is linked to affordability. Whilst we know that the cost of buildings is not immediately going to come down, indeed, in the beginning, smart connected buildings and infrastructure are likely to be more expensive. When we look to the future, we expect that industrialized processes will increase productivity and when linked to the reduction in errors and downtime, will ultimately increase the quality of construction while at the same time reducing the cost. This should improve affordability, making it possible for private buyers to invest in the residential and official buildings and the public sector to invest in desperately needed infrastructure. Logically, this increase in demand should create new direct construction jobs and indirect jobs for the entire value chain. Moreover, the improvement in infrastructure will make Europe more mobile and productive Lost time in traffic and on broken down railways, which drains budgets and hits productivity, will be a thing of the past. And finally, to inclusive society. Why do we think that this is a potential benefit of digital construction? Well, one reason is related to my previous comments about affordability. Obviously, housing that is too expensive for some citizens creates a disadvantage, pricing some citizens out of the market and even having a secondary impact on rent, which can make poorer tenants struggle even more to pay their essential needs. But there are other reasons. We expect that smart buildings and, and cities will be more accessible making it easier for less able-bodied citizens to move around. This will give them greater freedom and independence and eliminate exclusion where it currently exists as a result of unintentional barriers. So that gives you an idea of the thinking behind the Joint Industry Manifesto. Now I would like to come on to a couple of things that I know are important here in Lithuania. First of all, BIM. I mentioned earlier that the digital transformation is going at different speeds in different countries. This is also the case with building information modeling. A couple of years ago, we did a survey of national initiatives on BIM. We found some considerable differences. Recently, we updated this survey with new information. I can tell you that the differences are narrowing. Many EU countries have now adopted BIM strategies, for example, France, which has a program PNTP, the National Digital Transition Plan for Buildings, 
The UK, it's probably soon to leave the EU, was always well ahead and as early as 2016, it was in principle mandatory to use BIM Level 2 in public work contracts. The UK shared the work resulting in the EU BIM Handbook, which was published as guidance for public procurers. No, many EU countries are catching up, but many still needs help, particularly for the SMEs, which are struggling to cope with the use of BIM. We also have some problems across the EU, for example, how to ensure that BIM will be based on open standards and non-proprietary systems. I'm sure that you are aware that, long software, as that, that the, the large software providers are locking users into their own systems. FIEC is lobbying on BIM-related matters. For example, we will shortly produce a position paper on the legal aspects of BIM and on data policy. The things we are raising include the ownership of data, which is going to be a critical factor in whether or not contractors, particularly small ones, survive the shift towards new business models, which are based on the enormous value of BIM. We have to secure the position of contractors as the rules of the game are changing. As far as public procurement is concerned, under the public procurement directives, BIM can be promoted by public authorities but can only be made mandatory if the respective authority has provided the necessary BIM software free of charge. From FIEX perspective, we are very clear. We do not want the use of BIM to be made mandatory in public works contracts. We believe that public procurements could indeed stimulate and accelerate the use of BIM, but it's a far too early to make this a contractual obligation. Discussing with my colleagues yesterday regarding the situation in Lithuania, where you have a decrease in population and people moving to other countries and trying to attract younger people in the industry, we see the same challenges uh, in other countries, in Norway as well, it's difficult to attract young people to stay in the construction industry. For me, the need for uh, better productivity in the construction industry, with taking advantage of the possibilities of digitalization, is a very, very good opportunity to show young people that it's a lot of good opportunities in the future in the construction industry. I think we'd have to promote that for the younger generation who are going to enter our industry. I talked about the European Construction Industry Manifesto for digitalization and what we mean by smarter construction, stronger economy and inclusive society. I talked about some specific current activities that FIEC is doing in relation to digital transformation, in particular or specific lobbying efforts. Finally, I would like to try and sum up FIEC's vision for the future of construction. Rather than talk about smart cities look like and what they can do, I would rather describe how we see the approach in terms of evolution of the construction value chain and how, we, how the way the key actors work together will change. First and importantly, we are already seeing new entrants coming onto the market. This obviously includes software companies, large and small, but also robotic companies, artificial intelligence specialists, and a large number of gaming specialists who are adapting augmented reality used in computer games to construction design software. These new market entrants are clever, innovative and have seen the opportunity. We need them and we need to work with them. Without them, the construction industry will not be able to successfully complete the digital transformation. Then there are others such as telecom companies and the giants as Amazon and Google that are moving quickly into construction. Oracle is buying construction companies in the US. 
Google's smart city in Toronto, known as Quayside, is facing resistance and has run into trouble, but this kind of innovation is unlikely to be stopped now. So we cannot put overheads in the sand. I've always advocated for collaboration. Collaboration across the existing value chain and with the new market entrance. Such collaboration will enable us to influence events whilst maintaining control over the future of the built environment and the future of the industry. This is where we need to influence the EU policymakers too. The European Commission likes and is pushing the concepts of servitization and industrialization. The first refers to the offer of after-sales services. In our world, this suggests the provision of facility management services as well as the actual building. We can think about servicitation as design, build, manage and maintain. Industrialization suggests the greater use of off-production of large-scale components such as prefabricated building sections and entire rooms such as bathrooms. These concepts are already being turned into reality by companies such as Siemens, which is creating smart connected buildings with associated services using the data that is collected from sensors. We have a challenge as representatives of contractors. That is to find new ways of collaborating with new players in a construction ecosystem while also ensuring that these players do not influence EU policymakers before we finish that job. They are lobbying and the risk is that we become secondary to the process of adapting EU legislation to the fast changing digital built environment. The European Commission is already working on policies and programs for its new term of office starting later this year that are adapted to digitalization. However, the commission, is the commission strategy is to support the development and application of key technologies across all industries. Think artificial intelligence for industry rather than artificial intelligence for the construction industry. This means that digital innovation helps, for example, are intended not to have a sectoral approach. We need to take advantage of the opportunities presented by such programs and also by Horizon Europe, the next EU framework program for research, while accepting that we won't necessarily get everything that we ask for. It is clear that we have a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. I believe, as the president, that we have to keep working together, keep widening the collaboration while maintaining our sights on supporting and protecting contractors first to keep the industry thriving in the new circumstances and for the long term. Please do not forget construction is the solution industry. And with this, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I have come to the end of my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe just a moment. Maybe, maybe we'll have some questions. Thank you very much. Galbūt, kol kas dar slaido programėlėje klausimų nėra, gal yra klausimų analoginių būdų iš salės? Ar yra norinčio paklausti? I have one question. Yeah. Kadangi prezidento nelabai drįstate kas paklausti, aš paklausiu, ar turite kažkokį specialų patarimą raktą, kaip greičiau Lietuvoj pradėti taikyti visuotinai BIM metodologiją? Sorry, translation, maybe you have special key. How exactly everyone will used BIM in Lithuania. Maybe you have special proposal, special key for us. I think it's very, very
very important for the for the authorities, the public public authorities especially, to promote BIM, as the councillor is, is is doing today. It's it's very very good, very impressive that it's it's already so high on the agenda. And then we had the question regarding education. I think it's extremely important that the construction industry work very closely with the uh, institutions, the educational institutions, and uh, not stealing uh, teaching capacity from the university because they are quite attractive. It's better to, to join forces, the construction industry and the universities and the, and the technical schools, and trying to, to exchange information and educate more people because we are in need in all countries we are in need in great need of people with the skills of new te technology and we need that to have a, a, a faster approach to, to the to the very very rapid change in the industry thank you very much and one question for me uh, how Europe is doing in comparison uh, not only with, with US but also with China, for example, in digitizing cities, buildings and uh, applying BIM? I will not say I'm an expert on what's happening in, in the US and in Asia, but what I've seen of some of the larger uh, companies, uh, and I would more address this to the, to the companies uh, than to the, to the, to the countries. It looks like some of the really large companies like Siemens and Samsung has been the leading force in uh, adapting to new technology and trying to build parts of cities, uh, smart, not only build houses, but buildings and, and, and parts of cities taking advantage of the new technology. And, and so it's more about uh, the big companies than the, the different countries. Thank you very much, Mr. Toning. Thank you. Labai dėkojame.